and gentlemen, welcome back to the CSTV. I'm your host, Kathleen Egal Toto, Madam CS, and this is the striker. Stay tuned and have a true and real. The striker today leads us to the recent developments in the country with regard to Al Shabaab attacks on the Northern Frontier District and the coastal part of Kenya. Where is the problem? This is not the first time that the country is registering such cases of Al Shabaab pouncing on people. Um, in the northern part of Kenya and the coastal part of Kenya. So in today's episode, I take you through what could be the problem and perhaps what ought to be done from the security docket to ensure that actually this is capped. So let's go. Now, uh, you know, for a long time, we have had cases of Al-Shabaab attacks on the northern part of Kenya and on the coastal part of Kenya. And this does not mean that actually other parts of Kenya have not borne the plot of Al-Shabaab attacks. But we have had cases whereby the coastal part of Kenya and the, more, the northern part of Kenya are among the most affected. Specifically, when you look at the county like Igarisa and Ramu, those are some of the counties that have actually felt the impact of al-shabaab attacks because al-shabaab has you know subsequently and constantly actually um attacked the region claiming lives of people destroying property we have had cases where people have had to move you know from their homes to places where they think that it is safe but now the question that comes in what's happening like what what is it that actually the government and the security sector in kenya has failed to figure out as far as these attacks are concerned and perhaps to bring this to a standstill. Now, I start from the coastal part of Kenya. So, when you look at the coastal part of Kenya, there are so many things that are actually predisposing the region to Al Shabaab attacks. And the first thing that I start with is Al Shabaab, um, Boni Forest. I've done a video previously last year on why bone forest is an environmental dilemma to the security docket in Kenya uh, and you realize that the way that forest is you know it starts from Kenya and it ends in Somalia and therefore it can be easily accessed from the two uh, sides and then you realize that that forest is not accessible in terms of like the government can do operation in like we can send troops inside it has water inside and then the upper part of that forest is full of a canopy and therefore even the areas of errancy actually to trace the attackers whenever they have done attacks in the country actually is not easy so that is the first thing the environmental dilemma that has been posed by actually bone forest notwithstanding that there are also wild animals in there and therefore if we say for example we are pumping or we are uh, spraying the forest there is a very big likelihood that we are likely to kill and uh, disrupt the lives of some wild animals there. Two, there is no way Al-Shabaab uh, assailants can enter Kenya, attack and go back without having a place where they are calling out their surveillance, their watch out from and to prepare this attack. So there are uh, people in Kenya actually and especially in the in the areas where their attacks takes place who actually aid this al-shabaab in terms of um, calling out their activities you cannot tell me that al-shabaab will come all the way from Gadishu and all Ximayu and then enter Kenya attack and go back just blindly there must be people there, there must be people on the ground who are helping them who are hiding them who are giving them information about the police posts who are telling them how long it takes for the police to respond to uh, as a distress call in the region and even when we say that the assailants have attacked and they have gone back to or they have entered the bone forest and they are nowhere to be seen the higher chances are that once these assailants come they somewhere that they hide Within those villages, the government should be able actually to carry out a serious operation around there. And you will find that there are a lot of people on the ground there who are actually aiding Al-Shabaab. And therefore, me, this is a call to the security docket, um, the Minister of Interior and the Minister of Defense, that they should be able to join hands and use the National Intelligence Service very well in calling it out 
it is assignments down there and find out exactly who are the people in Kenya aiding Al Shabab. Who are these people who hide these attackers? Who are these people who give these attackers information? You know, that's 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 the second thing. The third thing it has to do with how our police posts and are actually located and the, the infrastructure and how they operate. You realize that most of our police posts, they don't have up to, let me say, 30 police officers. You realize that, yes, we have a police post, but there are very few police officers there that just in case actually there's a serious attack, it will take time before these people actually respond or even these attackers easily overwhelm the police because one they are few in number in the police post two the police officers yeah like they don't have the right equipment or enough equipment to fight back and the three you realize that by the time these attackers actually come to the police post they have destroyed the communication system and there's no way this police can call for police officers can call for a, a backup and therefore this is a call to the government that instead of setting police posts in those villages like in in, in areas like in lamu and near bone forest why can't we put a kdf barracks there yeah because the kenya defense forces are these are the people who are actually trained and they have this paramilitary training to handle external aggressors like al-shabaab into the in the country so why should we put kenya police or administrative police in ilamu or on Yambon forest when actually the people are supposed to be there at the kenya defense forces and even to and if we have to come lower why can't we then put the general service unit officers you know because we understand how they operate why should we take an administrative police or a kenya police and put them in in Imboni, and then we don't give them the re, re equipment that are needed to tackle Al Shabab. So it's a call that can we have the Kenya Defense Forces barracks or the GSU camp down there? And and we have several stations, substations of these um, uh, GSU or the Kenya Defense Forces around that particular um, region. And finally, it goes back to history. You know, the coastal battle of Kenya has registered a lot of grievances against the government of Kenya historically. It has to do with land, there are issues to do with marginalization, there are issues to do with economic deprivation, you know, there are issues to do with profiling, you know, all those things, especially the religious profiling of the of our brothers, uh, the Muslims. There, are, there have been cases that when operations are carried out in the country, especially operations against Al-Shabaab and terror attacks, that they are the first people who post the present of these actually operations. And therefore, I'm seated here and I'm trying to ask myself, could it be that we actually, sometimes what we call Al-Shabaab attacks are not Al-Shabaab attacks, but local militias who are actually uh, um, trying to destabilize the region and also destabilize the government security wise because of the historical grievances that they have had in the past and these grievances have not been actually addressed and most of the time we see that it is al Shabaab that has attacked the question is how true it is that all the attacks that have taken place in those regions are actually al Shabaab attacks sometimes we could be surprised to learn that these people are not actually al Shabaab. They are local militias who are taking advantage of the fact that al Shabaab has been hitting the region and therefore they are also out to terrorize people, get um, free goods, you know, get free property. And yeah, we are always caught free because while we are talking about when the attack has taken place, everybody is talking about al Shabaab was attacked. And nobody is looking inside and asking a question like, wait, could it be internal, local militias, gangs, etc.? So, looking at the history that has been um, associated with the coastal part of Kenya in relation to the Kenyan government since independence, I think it's also high time that the region is actually economically empowered and also um, given um, a share, or like I can say, uh, considered in some of the government positions, such that actually they don't feel like... Um, ignored or they don't feel like assumed or neglected in kenya's political and economic arena and and i'm saying this because you know 
uh, many times when people feel like they have been ignored, there are very high chances that they would start developing their own, own coping mechanism. And this coping mechanism, security-wise, could be also destabilizing the government of today by, you know, shaking it is uh, security apparatus by ensuring that there's insecurity in the local areas where they are, such that all the time the government is learning, you know, there's an attack, or there are militias, or there's an attempted attack, etc. And finally, it is uh, according to the Kenyan government. Um, you know, we have gotten used so much to where we see the Minister of Defense or the Minister of Interior or even the President or the Deputy President standing and saying, you know, we are going to do one or two, one, two, three to ensure that the security in this region. We are going to send police officers. We are going to build this. We are going to ensure that there is surveillance. We are going to start operation. You know, you are doing this in the media. And we all know that also Al-Shabaab or other terror groups and gangs are also in the media. So when you are telling the world, all Kenyans, what you want to do or what you are planning to do, they are also getting the information. And before you even plan to do that which you have planned to do, they have devised another alternative or a counter to what you are going to do. So you realize that, yes, it's good uh, to tell the people that you are there and you are in control. But when it reaches to security issues, and I've said this in my previous videos, when it comes to security issues, you don't need to announce every time what you are planning to do. Or you don't need to tell uh, the world in the media that you know we are going to put a parrot there. We are going to start Operation uh, Secure Bone Forest. We are going to, to ensure this and this. We are going to put this and this. Because the moment you announce that in the media, Al-Shabaab has also picked the information or whatever group that is attacking the people there has picked the information and they are going to use that information to develop a counter strategy to what you are going to do. So in terms of security, and this is according to the Minister of Defense and the Minister of Interior, can we please have some information, especially the strategies that the government is planning to put in place to solve the problems of insecurity in the northern part of Kenya and the coastal part of Kenya and anywhere in this country not coming to the media. Let Kenyans see the outcome because you know if you put security strategies in the coastal part of Kenya for example, eventually Kenyans will learn and will just feel that actually there's something being done because if we will not have terror attacks in the coastal part of Kenya, then Kenyans will know that actually you have secured the region. So you don't need to come and tell us you are sending a thousand GSU of there. You don't need to be told that you are sending, I don't know, uh, um, uh, war hammered vehicles there. You don't need to do that. You only need to start the operation abruptly. Start the strategies abruptly. Don't tell even the locals what you are going to do there. Because these locals can also not be trusted. Because some of them are the ones that are giving information to these al Shababs. So it is a call that can we have some information about security in this country, especially strategies to counter terrorism, lying low, and let Kenyans read that the government is doing the work through feeling the, secu the security and the safety within their um, borders. Otherwise, it is Madam CS signing out, the host with Indonesia. See you next uh, day, that's tomorrow at exactly 3 p.m. with another panga on uh, gender and history in Kenya's um, landscape. Bye.